YouTube. We are at a bit of a funny angle this morning because you can see my measuring jug in the top corner of the screen. Um, I am potting up Kongs um, and you're looking at my ceiling, probably full of cobwebs. I don't know, oh, yeah, there's a couple. <laughs> Job for today. Um, so we're on day five of the things to do before you see a dog trainer. Um, let me know how you've been getting on. Excuse any whinging, because I've got all four dogs in here at the minute, and it's a very serious time. Kong time. They're not having them yet, but... <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. Um, let me know how you've got on. Let me know if you had any, like, aha moments. Um, and most importantly, make sure you don't get them bloody done, because you'll just waste your money if you go and see a dog trainer, and they say, oh, well, we need you to get a vet check first, which you should. Uh, I specialise in barking dogs, so that's one of the first things I say is like, yeah, you can, but you've got to go and get a vet check first. Um, or I get my eyes on the dog, I say, oh, yeah, let's go and get that checked out. Either or, they go to the vet. Um, and then those are the first things I look at. What is the dog being fed? What is the dog's... Shut up, Scare. What is the dog's day-to-day -day activities? How, how much... Um, exercise of the game um and whatever else i've mentioned in the class <laughs> first coffee only two sips in i keep looking here as well but the camera's there hi um so let me know how you've got on let me know if there's anything else that you want to see um i have got planned to just share a few like demo videos with you next week uh, so if there's anything specific let me know let's dive into this lesson today um, have a cracking weekend. Ciao for now. I said, what are some things that you've been told about dog training that were either silly... I'm just trying to get this out of the way there. Stop taking the frame. <laughs> what things were you told that were silly um, that you perhaps believed at the time and thought to be true but turned out to be a load of absolute bullcrap? Um, and tell me some things that you've kind of, in the past either believed or held back from because you thought it was the wrong thing to do and it's really interesting i've got a whole full page on it um and i'm not going to go through them all in intensive details um but i'm going to go through some of them because um they're important and i think it's really useful for you to know um perhaps as a newcomer to the uh dog training world excuse me um or perhaps you were in the same situation as we all have been as well and thought oh yeah i've been told that and i actually believe that and oh, okay maybe it's not true maybe this happens instead um first one that came through was um if a dog was above you either on the stairs or um perhaps got on the sofa before you or perhaps went out the door before you that they were trying to uh, be top dog and that they were putting you down the pecking order um, and the lady who put this actually said, I felt such a tit for believing this sort of stuff because we now know that um, if a dog tries to get up on the sofa to go and lie down, it's more than likely because they find it very fucking comfortable. And it's not through any form of, I'm going to dominate you because I'm the dog and you're the puny human. It's not, it's nonsense. <laughs> there is hierarchical structure in um, the dog world. It's not, uh, I think dominance is a whole topic in itself. Um, there is structure and there is levels. It's a little bit like a family structure as opposed to I'm going to be above you and um, peck you down, if you like. That's nonsense. Uh, in my structure, for example, I have the four dogs and myself. Um, I lead the dogs. I am chief, if you like. Um, and then it goes, if it's just amongst the dogs, Sky is most definitely up there. The other dogs respect her. Um, if she is getting grumpy about something and she's like, rrr, rrr, they respect her enough to back off. Um, and I'm not really sure which other way it goes. Probably Lily, Hunter and then Digger. I don't know. Um, but then that concept will change again when Sky passes. God rest, we've got a few more years. But... The, the dynamics of that structure will change again. So it's a little bit more like a family unit. So think of it like that as opposed to the dog trying to dominate you. Um, another thing that was uh, mentioned, to get my dog used to other dogs, I had to go and take take him to places where dogs were, i.e. flooding. Um, now I know this dog and 
this dog is very unsure of the world he's very scared um, and this method which she now knows is not true and she's working through um, his reactivity with so much more success um, is that what's happening here is it is actually flooding so you've got a dog that's scared of dogs and it's a common thing to take them down to the dog park. I need to get them used to other dogs. Oh my God, I have to stop this barking. Um, I'm tired of the daily embarrassment um, and stress and strain that just going for a dog walk brings. I get it, I've been there. Um, and I've even tried this method of flooding, you know? I was like, with my first dog, Titan, this was my first dog. He, You see, he's a big bugger. Was a big bugger, bless him, 60 kilos. He had an issue with dogs. I took him down to the park. It was the worst thing I ever did. Because of his strength and because of his size, I had a right job holding on to him. There was dogs everywhere. Um, and I never, never frankly wanted to go back into that situation. I was like, let's get out of here. Um, and I learned that, you know, flooding the dog, it's a little bit like if you think about whatever you're incredibly scared of. Most people tend to have one thing that like really shits them up. For me, it's spiders. I can deal with them at a distance and I can deal with one that I need to get rid of. But if I got taken to the spider park and put amongst however many goddamn off-lead spiders running up to me and doing blah, I would freak out. Well, I would do one of two things. I would either freak out and be like, blah, 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 or I would go whoosh, shut down. And it's this shut downness, um, shut downness is that a word? <laughs> it's this shut down behavior where the owners think, oh, my dog's not barking. It's working. When what's really happening is the dog is dying inside, I would just be like, oh, my God, crawl over me, eat me, make this fucking end. That's flooding. Um, so that's a myth that's been busted. Barking is aggressive was another one. Um, it is very rare. I cannot think off the top of my head the actual percentage of this, but it's very incredibly rare that a dog is barking through aggression aggression cases do exist um but like i said they're very few and far between most of the barking emotional things that i deal with especially are attention fear frustration um alert is another one with the dogs barking in the house uh what else have i mentioned anxiousness anxiousness and fearfulness are quite closely tied together but they are different fear is very specific anxiety is varied uh, amongst other things um and there's very rarely is is barking an aggressive thing like a dog doesn't go out there and go i'm intentionally going to be an aggressive fuck today and i want to go and <laughs> kill something um you could argue that like but claire you talk about digger in that way it's not aggression that digger's coming from a place of yes he loves to hunt yes he loves to kill stuff given half a chance that's his breed but when it comes to other triggers that um aren't prey it's more frustration and in some cases there's fear there so barking does not necessarily mean that the dog is aggressive um right what was another one um a dog approaching you to sniff means that they want to in interact now i really i smiled when i read this one because um it's very true you know one of the things that we automatically do as humans is when we see a dog we stare at them then we go to put our hand out or and we let them sniff us. Now, if the dog is sniffing you, it doesn't mean that you pat them on the head and whatnot. Dogs are doing this. Some dogs, don't get me wrong, you walk up to some dogs and it'll just be like, yes, fuss me. Give me all you've got. Um, but in the cases of like dogs that are a little bit unsure or wary, they're sniffing you to check out the whole um, whole picture, if you like. When I meet a dog, any dog, um, but especially new dogs, I tend to ignore the dog completely. I don't look at it. I don't speak to it. I hate calling dogs it, but you get the message. Um, and I let the dog approach me. And then they soon realise that, oh, this lady's got treats. <laughs> and this lady smells of other dogs, <laughs> which can put some dogs off and, and not others. Um, but sniffing does not mean that it's a pass to force the dog and interact with the dog. Um, that's the quickest way of getting a snap or being bitten if you uh, go in too quickly with the dog that's like, sensitive to that. Um, pulling on the lead is dominant. We've kind of covered dominant a little bit and going through doors first and the top dog pecking order thing is it's nonsense. <laughs> um, yanking on the lead for things, problems, being pulled on the lead mainly, that, that fixes it. 
Um, again, I'm not going to go into the whole quadrants and punishment based things because when we deep dive into what's called the quadrants, whether you roll on that boat or not, personally, I try and stick to certain things, but there's so many categories. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't talk about it because it's too deep. Blah. Yankee on the lead fixes it. It's not very ethical. It's not very kind on the dog to yank them on the lead and correct them. Like I was saying earlier, this is my personal preference. Um, and what it tends to do is just mask the problem for um, a little while. Or you might do it enough where the dog is like, she's scared to, to, to do anything. And if that's your bag, on you go. <laughs> Fine. I don't like my dogs to be scared of of things. I want them to do things for me because they choose to. I want to fix the loose lead walking problem um, because I want to help my dog through it. Now, here's an interesting story for you. I went to see, and I'm sure, um, I'm sure they won't mind me telling you this. I went to see a young little cockapoo, um, and this lady had come to my puppy classes. She followed my content. Uh, she'd come to my teenage class, and she came to me. And she says, "Claire, like he's pulling excessively on the leads. Uh, he's desperately, desperately trying to get to other dogs. Sometimes he won't walk, or sometimes he pulls all the way back home. Um, I need help with loose lead walking." Right. So I went round to see the dog and instantly uh jarvis is still with me today uh, instantly I, when i took him out on the walk i thought this isn't just a loose lead walking problem yes the dog's pulling on the lead but underneath that training problem was a dog in quite an anxious state he was in an anxious state on this particular section of the walk and then when he saw other dogs he was in another emotional state because he wanted to go and greet them so we were getting frustration um, and what we had to do in order to fix that loose lead walking problem was to fix the underlying emotion. So this part of the walk, dude, isn't scary. It didn't go like that. I had to do a lot of work with him. It wasn't just, hey, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. Um, and to this day, she can uh, walk with him to heal perfectly, putting my dogs to shame on her heel work. Um, she can pass other dogs. Um, he can be off lead and go and meet other dogs and she can recall him away from them. And um, because we fix that underlying emotion, we said to the dog, I hear you, you're struggling with something, let me help you through it. Um, so yeah, like yanking on the lead can have many um, underlying issues, but yanking them back on it generally doesn't fix it in an ethical way. Uh, need to show them who's boss. GSDs are easy to train. Interesting one, because <clears throat> GSDs are easy to train from my perspective, but... GSDs are very intelligent that they pick up everything that we want them to and everything that we don't want them to. <laughs> so in some cases, GSDs aren't easy to train. Uh, interesting one, that. Another one, pit bulls are born killers and dangerous dogs. Uh, pit bulls are, yeah, put, pit bulls are born killers and dangerous dogs. Nah. No, no, no. I have never actually, ah. Uh, no, I've never actually had the pleasure of meeting a pit bull and I I wouldn't meet very many of them in the UK um because they're of the breed where they get taken away and assessed and stuff um and generally speaking pit bulls that have been passed on their assessment tests and are very well behaved don't come to me for training just the way it goes whether they're a pit bull or a pomeranian it, I don't see well behaved dogs because people come to me with an issue are they born killers and dangerous dogs naturally no no, absolutely not. Um, is it specific to, let's say, the bullshit breed legislation crap that Dobermans are aggressive dogs, German Shepherds are aggressive dogs, Staffies are aggressive, aggressive dogs? No, no. It comes down to what you probably have heard a lot of places on deed, not breed. Um, you shouldn't... I know it's hard, especially if you've had a bad memory, but you should not... Um, Judge a book by its cover. You know, I've had it so many times with the German Shepherds. When we've just been walking, like I used to take him and Skye, the younger one, and we were just walking down the street and people have crossed the road. People have given me dirty looks. People have gone out of their way to tell me and ask me, or not tell, like a rhetorical question, why the hell do you own such an aggressive and dangerous breed? And I'm like, what? They're not fucking doing anything. Well, of course, you know. Um, I got <laughs> I got wound up and I could feel it in the dogs. I'm like, just carry on, Claire, just carry on. But people have a bias to specific breeds and really this should be stopped. I get it if you've had an incident with a dog where you've been injured or genuinely scared, where a German Shepherd 
Duke's just kicked off barking. Um, if you've got a genuine fear of that particular breed, then you're going to have a certain bias towards them. Um, but it's not all of them. Yeah, I promise you that it's not all of them. I meet some amazingly friendly, lovely, beautiful staffies, uh, Dobermans, Shepherds. I meet them all and um, that have got really nice characters underneath it, but are just struggling, like I said previously, with an underlying emotion that's making things a little bit difficult for them to cope with. So bear that in mind. <clears throat> um, all dogs are the same and dogs are what you make them, i.e. bad dog bad owner that kind of ties into what i've just said all dogs are not the same um even amongst breeds like even if you've got like let's say we take six german shepherds they're going to have particular tendencies that are the same i.e they're, they're gonna like to herd stuff or they're gonna perhaps love the chase of a tennis ball or whatever but that can be so variable across the board you might get one dog that's not interested in the toy at all and is all for the food and you might get the other end of the spectrum where food, praise, toys, none of that works because the dog's too busy and too engaged in sniffing or digging or chasing or environmental stuff or whatever. Um, so even across the board of breeds, there's many variations. And we like to, I certainly like to think of dogs as individuals. Um, so yeah, there's little tweaks and stuff um, in the characters. So they're not all the same. Uh, taking food away to ensure that they don't guard. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why would you do that? You want to teach all of my dogs, none of my dogs have a resource guarding issue. That's a lie. Sky does, but it's not ever been much of a problem. She's old, she's grumpy, um, and Lily did try to dive bomb into a bowl once. I think that's where the issue came from. But I can feed them all in the same room. I have never once taken or touched their food bowl. If I, if I ever go over to their food bowl for anything, it's generally to put something in it. So my dogs have learned that me approaching is a good thing. Oh, mum's coming with something tasty. What we got, mum? Yeah. Um, also, while they've been eaten as well and guarding, especially I've had all of my dogs from young or pup, just my personal preference. I've always touched them in some way while they're eating. They're eating the dinner. I fuss the back of them, I work down the leg, I get them used to having their toes touched and the tail and stuff like that. None of them have a problem with handling or caught. Cool. So don't take your food away. Oh, and the last one, not playing tuggy unless I win every time. There's still a big um, misconception about this. Or I don't want to play tuggy because I don't want to make them aggressive. Or I don't want to play tuggy because they're super large and I'm not going to win the game so we don't play it. This is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. If you want a quick, surefire way, if you've got a dog that's mad keen on toys, how annoying is that? <clears throat> I just feel a head tickling me. I thought it was a spider. Um, if you've got a dog that's mad keen on toys and you need to get some interaction and focus um, from them, the quickest, safest and easiest way to do that is with a tug game. Providing on the dog, bear with me here a second. Um, I like Tuggy because you've got that natural connection. Dog's here, you're here. Tuggy's in the middle, you've got hold of it. You can play, you can interact, you can use it for your heel work. It's not a ball that's going to roll out into the uh, into the road and your dog's going to get squashed. Tuggy is a nice thing to, um, to play with. Now, the only problems where Tuggy might come... Uh, the, the problems that Tuggy might bring, should I say, with some dogs that cannot, um, is not a problem. Fucking hell, get your words out, Claire. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long day at the time of this recording. The only problems that we'd have with this is, let's say we've got a dog that can't drop. Um, a dog that is potentially quite um, guardy of what they have. So if we go back to the food stuff, like if they're trying to get it and they're like, no, this is mine. We need to do some additional work there with that. Uh, large dogs, I'm a fan of teaching dogs tuggy games when they're young and when they don't weigh like this <laughs> because it gets hard when they get bigger. Um, is it a problem that they win? No. For less confident dogs, I and if they'll interact with a game of tuggy, I let them win because it boosts their confidence. Um, and it's again, it comes down to, I think this whole tuggy thing comes down to people thinking that the dog is going to dominate them um that it's not the case the other thing with tuggy is like arousal so if you've got a dog that's peaks in arousal and you start playing with them and all of a sudden they go Wah! and they start to do my 
<laughs> might have to edit that out. Um, oh, fuck it, I'm not bothered. Uh, I'm only human. Um, but a dog that has high arousal and they just like tip the point where they just go absolutely mental, then there's underlying work there. Uh, there's more work there that we need to do. Listen, I have rambled for, oh my goodness, 20 fucking minutes on Mythbusters. But hopefully that has... Um, rectified a few of them for you if you thought about any of these things um then you know let me know drop me an email so, oh god yeah claire i've had i've had this as well um or i've thought this and it goes without saying obviously we've got two more lessons here on this uh, roadmap but if you want to learn more about what i was talking about earlier with the punishments uh there's positive punishment positive reinforcement negative reinforcement and negative which one have i not done punishment um get yourself inside the evolution membership because there's at least 30 videos at the time of this recording and that you can dive into and you'll see what i mean like with the with the depth that dog training can go to so if you can put up with 20 more minutes of me um <laughs> rambling on about stuff and um, then do make sure that you sign up um and get yourself inside so i'll see you on the next video ciao for now